Every time I open a magazine, there always seems to be a random ladder hanging around in the background of a bathroom or a lounge area. In this DIY, we're going to show you exactly how to make these great focal points for you to have in your home. So what have I used? I've used three lengths of 2.4 meter, 32 by 69 mil planed all round timber. The two longer lengths are gonna make the sides, which are gonna be cut to 1.8 meters long, and then I've got five pieces cut to 450, which are gonna make up the rungs of the ladder. I've done all the thinking for you, check out the cutting list on the side, take that down to the guys at Builders, and they will cut your timber to the exact sizes for you. I'm gonna be using some chalk paint because it's ideal to create that weathered look, especially when I put some sandpaper on it afterwards. I've got some wood stain, which I'm gonna stain up to get that darker look on the top side of the ladder. I'm making use of some wood glue, tape measure, pencil, some 60 millimeter cut screws, and a cordless drill with a four millimeter wood bit. We're going to be building the ladder structure here flat on the workbench. So the first thing to do is clear all this stuff out of the way. I've got five of these rungs or these steps and I'm gonna start them by offsetting them 150 mils from the end. From there on, I'm gonna evenly space the balance all the way down the length of the timber. That spacing I'm gonna use is 375 millimeters from center point to center point. I'm using a four by 60 millimeter screw, so therefore I'm using a clearance hole of four millimeters and I'm making use of a wood drill bit. Now you'll see it's got a spiked tip and little fluted sides, and that just stops that drill bit from wandering around, especially going into soft pine. As you drill into soft pine and it starts to touch against the harder grain structure, so that drill bit will tend to wander. A wood bit helps prevent that and keeps that hole centralized exactly where you want to drill. When you are drilling, it's a good idea to put a piece of scrap board underneath, that way you're gonna drill all the way through into the board and not into your workbench, or the kitchen table if you're working at home. My screws are all in place and now it's time to insert the rungs. Now we'll flip that up on its side. The rungs are going to go in the center. So you can see there is a bit of an elevation that we need just to offset it up. Um, you can measure and mark this and hold it in position, but it can be a bit tricky. I like to actually make use of some spaces under there and that way I make sure each one is exactly the same. The spacing for this particular project works out to be around about 18 millimeters which is the standard thickness of my shutterboard and I've got plenty of offcuts. So I just pop one of those guys into place, one on the other side, and then that'll hold it perfectly in position and the right height. I am gonna start off at the far end with my first offset being 150 and then measure each rung down 375 millimeters. Before inserting each rung, just double check with a tape measure that you have got it in the right position to ensure that it is square from side to side. Carry on through each rung. As you work through, just rub off any excess glue. It does prevent the stain from penetrating into the timber and it causes more work later on. The ladder structure is complete. That was so easy to do. All I need to do next is take some sandpaper, run it on the edges and on the surface. The surface you're gonna create a bit of a key to allow the stain to penetrate into the timber a little bit better, as well as taking off the sharp edges and splinters from the sides and the corners here. It's all sanded down, I've removed all the dust, and I'm now going to apply some wood stain. Now I'm gonna go for this dark look on the underside, and then I'm gonna cover it up again with the chalk paint. Um, when you are using wood stain, it is very good at staining timber and your fingers. So make use of these really awesome, sexy looking gloves, just to keep that stain off your fingers. With this stain, you can actually just apply it using a rag and just rub it in. Now you'll see I've actually left my screw holes open. I want that rough, rustic look, so I think it'll actually add character to the rail. Um, if you want, you can countersink those holes as well as just fill them up with some wood filler and sand them down smooth. That way they won't be visible. The ladder's all stained up and it really is amazing how the stain actually transforms that uh, pine timber to something completely different. With that dry, I'm now going to start applying my chalk spray paint. Now, first of all, I don't want to spray the whole thing. I'm just going to take it up to around about halfway, just slightly past. I'm going to mark that edge off with some masking tape, and I'm going to paint the balance of the underside. 
when applying your spray paint, you can just do it the old fashioned way with your finger, which works just as well. It does get a bit tiring. I've done a clip on this tool already and it attaches to your spray gun and it creates a trigger gun and makes it so much easier to paint with. This paint is fantastic. We only need to put on one coat. It's more than sufficient. The coverage is fantastic. It really does coat well. And remember, we're gonna be scraping it, uh, some of it off at the end anyway to create that aged look. When spraying, you wanna stay approximately 20 to 30 centimeters away from the timber surface and keep the spray gun moving all the time. The moment you stop and you're still pressing the trigger, that's when you get those concentrated spots and those runs start to appear. Make sure you are spraying in a well-ventilated area, otherwise you must wear the correct safety equipment. The chalk paint is on and I really love this two-tone look. The fun part now is actually scuffing it all up and scraping half of this paint off to give it that natural weathered aged look. When sanding it down, it's up to you how rugged you want that final look. But remember, less is more sometimes and that way you can always take a bit more off at a later stage. The motion you want to use is a light rough scuff opposed to a hard sanding. Just play around until you get the desired effect. The only thing left to do now is to apply a protective clear top coat. And then the most important thing is get it into place. You can even add on some shells at some later stage for some additional storage in your home. That's it for this DIY. This guy definitely approves. I've got the thumbs up. I think this has added a great focal point, great feature for this bathroom. If you enjoyed this DIY, like it, share it. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where there's a range of DIYs that you will love and product reviews to check out too. From this DIY guy and the cat, enjoy your DIYs, be amazing and love the DIY therapy.